This week we're going to begin our exploration of what the art department does on a movie with particular attention paid to the set decorator. If the production designer determines the look of a film after discussing the overall vision with the director, the art director enables the look with scheduling and budgeting and employing the rest of the art department. After the sets have been chosen to be shot either on location or built by the construction crew, the set decorators create the look by adding color, texture, and furnishings. The art department is always way ahead of the rest of the departments. It's because they have to research, design, and build before the shooting company arrives. For a feature, it used to be three to four months or even longer before the shooting started, but the recent trend is that it's getting shorter and shorter due to the studios trying to push and save money. I put the director and production designer together at the top because they meet before anybody else gets involved in the production process. If you just think of it, locations and cinematographers can't get involved unless they know whether they're shooting on location or in the studio on a set. So early on in the process, the director and production designer get together and they talk and collaborate on coming up with the vision of the movie. Production designers set the design direction and the art designer or the art director oversees executing design by working with the set designers and construction coordinators. The art director's role is to carry out what the production designer wants, to delegate and work with the set designers and supervise all designs and construction department uh, activity as well, as well as being responsible for scheduling and budgeting. The production designer is always busy talking with the director and the producers, checking locations, talking with the other department heads such as special effects. The art director is in charge of carrying out production designer's vision, making sure it gets designed and built, and that nothing falls through the cracks. However, today the art director has become far more like a project manager, dealing mainly with scheduling and budgeting, so it falls on the set decorator to be more creative in supplying the look and feel of what they're building. Going back at the beginning of film, you can imagine that because it was so new, most of the sets were designed like they were part of the theater. So you can imagine if you just took away the proscenium stage and put it inside a studio, that's how they were designed. And they had to have particular attention to, to adding lots of light because the technology wasn't sophisticated enough, the film wasn't fast enough to really shoot without a lot of light. So the sets were pretty primitive speaking. Uh, and, and they also mostly done on location where there's a lot more sunlight. In the early 20s, uh, German Expressionism became the look as far as avant-garde uh, ideas in film, and it's because the sets were almost as dramatic as the action on the film. So here we see the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, how involving the sets are, how dramatic the sets are, the exaggerated shadows, the sharp edges. And the, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari set the trend for more experimentation and creativity in developing and designing sets. As you can see here, just the light alone coming through the window, the shape of the window, it became another character in the drama of making movies. As time went on, technology improved, then things became more realistic in the art department and could, they could put photos in the background, mat shots, they could fill out the sets, they didn't have to have as much light, the lamps were more intense, and so the art department got more sophisticated, more realistic, and into more believability in the film. Here we have Cedric Gibbons, one of the great early production designers, sketching out a storyboard for a film, and his, his look in this gigantic set that he built here for Thief of Baghdad. You can see this is on the lot, how large that is, how, how huge it went into making just the backdrop for this as you can see here, the Thief of Baghdad, so it looked real. So he was he was known for being one of the early uh, touted creators of, of, of art direction. Here was a futuristic movie he did called Things to Come, giving you that proto Star Trek look all the way back in nineteen early nineteen thirties. The other giant back then was a man named William uh, Mackenzie Menzies. And um, or William Cameron Menzies, I should say, and he's here working with a model on set. How you look how realistic and how specific the model is that will then be blown up into the movie. He was known for 
all a manner of designs, but even in the 1930s, he was Mr. Art Deco. You can see all the 30s movies that, that Art Deco design that came in from France. It was primarily a French idea that got incorporated by Hollywood. His sets uh, dominated the 30s look in movies. As you can see in this musical production here, the, the, the kind of luminescent Art Deco uh, fabulous uh, costume dramas were a, a Menzies uh, calling card. And you can, and as set design and, and deck became more and more well financed, and we got more and more epic in our movie making because we're competing with TV now in the 1950s. Ben Hur was a huge, spectacular uh, William Wyler movie where set design and set deck just almost overwhelmed everybody with giganticism. One of the deans of production design, a man named Ken Adam, now Sir Ken Adam, recently deceased, was known for many, many movies, but he created The War Room here in Dr. Strangelove, and he also is known for a James Bond movie, You Only Live Twice, where he created the inside of a volcano here. This was the first million dollar set ever built. Now it's common, but back then it was fantastic. But when we're talking about sets, we're really talking about the detail, the realistic detail that makes, whether it's fantasy or an epic war adventure or a romantic comedy, come to life. So it has to be realistic detail for us to suspend a disbelief and jump into the movie. And this is, for example, just the precise but very realistic set decoration in Barfly. This, this, uh, no, this is actually Red Rocks West. This is the bar in Red Rocks West, but it was created to look like a bar in Arizona or New Mexico. But since the 50s, set design and production design has become a huge factor in selling movies to the public. And as you can see here, it's not only the color, but the huge depth that set design gives. The main thing about the set decorators, they gotta supply the 3D look. They gotta make it look three-dimensional by placing the objects so that we will divide the space up, as you can see here, the long tables, the chairs, going all the way back to the um, Royal Majesty uh, thrones in the rear. Color design is important to make sure it's three-dimensional, but also placements of objects. Set decorators are the ones who supply those chairs, those furnishings, those coverings, and configure them to allow for us. As you can see, we can go. there's a room behind us here with a door open, the candle. Uh, uh, lit. It's, it's a set deck working with a cinematographer to give us that 3D look. And when we have Kubrick as our vanishing point expert working with set deck, you can see how he is very specific when he works with set deck people, but they're the ones who are going to have to supply the right space outfit and the right coloration, the right sci-fi look. They create this all out of their own imagination to see what a futuristic landscape is. As you can see here, the, the look is has got depth, but it's got it's also got this uh, antiseptic look, which is what the futuristic uh, scene is supposed to bring. It's all set deck working here, and in this case too, it's not only the color and the texture, but putting that the black furniture against the white wall and the pink and the, and the whole mixture of the precise furnishings. Whether it's going to be Louis the Fourteenth or they're going to be modern, or whether they're going to be mixed, as in this picture. It's all uh, set deck. Here we can see they're slating the scene for 2001 Kubrick movie, but the set deck has chosen the bed, the regal furniture, that very candy-colored futuristic space person standing there, and then that very supernal white room, almost, almost uh, spiritually uh, absent, all put together for Kubrick, but done primarily through set decoration. Here we have Children of Men, Crazan, using set de decoration here in the background, just using newspapers, just using newspapers as this person who's trying to survive this uh, kind of dystopia, this, this, this Armageddon. And it's a nice touch the set decorators have done, because they have all these hysterical headlines kind of washed out and slapped together adding to the drama of the movie, as would 
the set decorators for the hostel adding all these strange implements that make us afraid. And this is, I think, a wonderful set decoration where they've got the, the killers out there with their guns and everything. But look at the way that paper, it's just, it's just kind of blown, scattered paper. That's really a set dresser's thing, but the set decorator came up with the idea of how to uh, put this all together. What they do is they, they come up with designs, uh, and usually the art director will find someone to either do the blueprint designs, or they'll do it themselves, and they'll do a 3D mock-up like this on a computer. And then they'll start building, like these gentlemen here, and they'll look for the blueprints to, to build whatever set it is. And then the decorators come in with all the implements that will fill out the uh, space. So you have the empty space, and the people who are making that space come to life are the decorators. Uh, one of the more unheralded things a decorator might do, but we uh, it, it's, it's a very hands-on uh, part of the movie making. It's not sitting at the table. It's actually coming in and building what we have to look at. And I'm just using some bedroom sets here. But if you look at the liveliness of this bedroom set, and this, this, this the kind of austere comparison with this bedroom set, and then this moody kind of gold nostalgic look to this bedroom set, and this futuristic strange clockwork orange bedroom set, are the James Bond spare, very modern, postmodern, but dark bedroom set, are the bedroom set to Marie Antoinette. Look at the lavishness, the Rococo uh, rolling of the fabric and colors, the morning after, the lush, almost decadent look that the set deck people have provided. Here's Kubrick and Clockwork Orange using his uh, set decoration as a spare modern look, he just very spare in his placement of objects, but you still get the sense of sterility in an empty modern future, and how people almost out of place by how people are, are, are separate and almost diminished by the kind of clashing vibrancy of the set. Whereas these people have opulence, the set decorators giving a sense of opulence and depth with the greenery in the background and the gold and foreground and the, and the very formal wear. We can tell without knowing what's going on, the opulence is taking place here. And here you take opulence plus futuristic and look at the set decorators have done here to give us a futuristic look. The floating staircase, the kind of um, pastel lozenge-colored couch, couches with the strange uh, pools there. Maybe it's a fireplace and then the futuristic patio. Or we do kitchens here. Set decorators making a kitchen come to life. Look what they've done in this movie to make that kitchen really come to life. The, the colors of the, the crockery, the, the plants, the posters on the on the... On the TV, as as in Meryl Streep with this set in the background, they've got the the, the lively fruit laden table and the flowers to the left and and the orange colored chairs again making a very sunlit lively room, and you can make it as lively as you want. As you can you can do your futuristic casino, or if you're going to the for, horror genre like we are, and you got your Escher like drawing for the cabin in the woods, you can come with your final scene, and you can decorate it as grimly as possible.